Welcome to Ripple Training's iTunes help page. If you've purchased or you're considering purchasing one of our training products, you're most likely watching this video because you need an overview on the process of downloading and managing the tutorial movies using Apple's iTunes software. Once you've purchased a tutorial from us, an email is generated and sent to the address you provided in your contact information. In the email, you'll find the link to the tutorial under the heading Download Tutorial Now. If more than one product was purchased, multiple links will appear. The same links appear next to each product name in the item section. If you're on a Mac, clicking a link will automatically launch iTunes. If you're on a PC, you'll need to install and launch iTunes before clicking any of the links. iTunes for Windows is available as a free download from Apple. The next step is to verify the version of iTunes you're running. Apple made significant changes to the interface in version 12 that affects how the tutorials are accessed. From the iTunes menu, choose About iTunes. If you're using iTunes 12 or later, keep watching. If you're using an earlier version of iTunes, check out our iTunes help page for further instructions. First, hover your mouse over the More menu in the top left of the interface. The tutorial you purchased will appear in the Podcast section. In this example, a tutorial called Sound Editing in Final Cut Pro appears in the list, along with some other podcasts. To view and download your tutorial, select the tutorial from the list, then make sure the My Podcasts button is selected. The name of the tutorial appears at the top of the window, along with a single episode that is downloaded automatically. In this case, a PDF file labeled Important Please Read. I'll come back to this document in a moment. For those of you new to podcasts, only the first episode is downloaded to prevent your drive from filling up with content you may or may not want. You'll therefore need to download the remainder of the podcast manually. To view and download the entire podcast, click the Feed button on the right-hand side of the interface. You can now download individual episodes by clicking the cloud icon to the right of each episode name. However, it's much faster to download them all at once by right-clicking on the podcast thumbnail in the podcast list and choosing Download All. To monitor the progress of the downloads, click the Downloads button in the upper right of the interface. A window will appear displaying the status of each episode as it downloads. If you're on a slower network, we highly recommend that you turn off Allow Simultaneous Downloads, as this option could cause timeout errors. Next, choose the settings wheel next to the podcast title at the top of the interface. At the bottom, turn Delete Played Episodes to Off, then click Done. To change this for all future podcasts, click Defaults at the bottom left of the interface and turn off Delete Played Episodes here as well. You can also view your podcast in List View by clicking the drop-down menu at the top right of the interface and choosing Episode List from the drop-down. I prefer this view because it's less cluttered, allowing you to clearly see all the lesson titles and associated metadata. Once your movies have been downloaded, they will appear with a check mark. The blue dot indicates the lesson has not been viewed. Before watching any movies, double click on the episode labeled Important Please Read. This will open the document in a PDF reader such as Apple's Preview app or Adobe's Acrobat. Many of our tutorials come with media for following along with the instructor in your own copy of the software you are learning. If your particular tutorial does have media associated with it, you'll find the link to download it in this PDF, along with specific instructions on what to do with it once it's been downloaded. Further instructions for importing and working with the media will be provided by the instructor in the tutorial movies themselves. Some tutorials also include an ebook of the lessons. If your tutorial has an ebook, it will appear as the second episode in the list. To open it in your PDF reader, simply double click on the ebook title. The table of contents includes hyperlinks, allowing you to jump right to the lesson you're interested in. This way, you can follow along in your software using either the movies or the ebook. You can watch the tutorial movies in any order you like. However, for flow and continuity, we recommend watching them in order if you're watching them for the first time. You can watch the movies directly from the podcast section, but for maximum playback and searching efficiency, we recommend that you create a playlist for your movies. One of the primary benefits of creating a playlist is that you can customize how your movies play back, and you can even burn backups. Switch to Playlist View from the top of the interface. Then, click the podcast title and drag the entire podcast into the sidebar, directly on top of where it says Playlists. Release your mouse, then click the Add to Playlist button on the window that appears. Press Done at the top right. A playlist is created and named according to the podcast title, in this case, Sound Editing in Final Cut Pro 10. If you wish, you can rename the playlist because playlists appear in alphabetical order in the sidebar. The movie playback order can now be rearranged, given ratings and other criteria. 
Perhaps most importantly, movies in a playlist will play back sequentially without stopping, providing you with uninterrupted viewing of the entire tutorial should you choose to watch all the lessons in one sitting. To watch a lesson, simply double click any movie in the list and the movie will begin playing full screen on your display. Use the on-screen controls to fast forward, rewind, or pause the movie. To access the chapter markers, click this button. To stream the movie to your Apple TV, click this one. Keep in mind that first generation Apple TVs do not support streaming. Press Escape to return to the playlist. To create a backup on DVD-ROM, select the playlist, then from the file menu choose Burn Playlist to Disk. The Burn Settings window will appear. Choose Data CD or DVD, then click Burn. When prompted, insert blank DVD-R media into your Mac or PC's DVD burner. If you lose your movies due to a drive failure, you can drag the movies from your optical media back into your iTunes library. For instructions on syncing the movies with your iPad, please refer to the Important Please Read document I referred to earlier.